Hello and welcome to the Ben Washington Baptist Church online Sunday service message. We hope and pray that something will be said to bless you and your walk with the Lord. Greetings, Ben Washington. <laughs> this is better. Greetings, Ben Washington. This is uh, Pastor Sneed and, and Lady B. And we'd like to give you an update on a few things that are going on at, at the Ben uh, during this time of of rest and, and stay at home and be safe. So this time, Sister Sneak, will you tell us some great things that are going on? I will. We have so many exciting new things happening that I can't wait for us all to get back together to enjoy. I just want to talk about two of them. One is the Ben Den. We are creating a welcome center at Ben Washington. And you know, in your house, when you have a den, that's the room that everybody comes in and where friends become family. You just sit down and get together and have a great time. Where our visitors and those interested in joining uh, Ben Washington will be able to go to the Ben Den when we get back and do their paperwork and be greeted by the awesome pit ministry. So we're looking forward to meeting one another in the den. The second thing is all of the different Zoom activities we're having. Um, our young adult ladies are having their Sunday school class through Zoom. The youth are Zooming. And now the adult Sunday school class are going to also join in together on Sundays via Zoom. And Zoom is a great way for us to connect, to see one another, and have classes. And with the young adult ladies, I just want to put in a little plug here. If you're between 18 and 35, this Sunday, that's today, um, hopefully you're viewing this before 12 o'clock. Uh, we want you to come into the Zoom theater, a.k.a. your own house. We are going to watch the Clark sisters and finish talking about the impact of a mother's words on her children. So we're going to Zoom into the theater. Young adult ladies, meet us there. Let's see that movie and let's have a great time discussing how we as women can influence our children, positively and negatively. Okay, those are two exciting things. I also want to uh, give a shout out to Elaine Smiley. She just went off to the military for Yay. basic training, and I found out uh, from her mother that uh, she was sharing her faith with a young lady and led that young lady to Christ. Amen. So I mean, you know that even though yes, you may yes, be yes. Uh, separated uh, from fellowshipping uh, at this location, you're still supposed to be a witness. So I want to shout out to Elaine for sharing her faith uh, and helping somebody to find that way into the kingdom. Isn't that great news? That is fantastic yeah. news. And, uh, and finally, I would just like to say my two shout outs is I want to thank Lady V for keeping me in check. Uh, I haven't had a donut in weeks. Yes, that's right. I'm, you I, have it. I'm having to go walk more now because I have time to walk. Uh, and so, and I also want to shout out to my my uh, daughter, Jalen, and her Yay. husband, Dean, they, they blessed us with our first grandchild. Yay. And so we're really, really excited. <laughs> we are excited. excited. Yes. yes, this is Mimi V and Papa D, oh, okay? Yeah, yeah we're yeah. Good. <laughs> Look forward to having you all uh, join uh, with us in our worship uh, service, also our Bible studies. I encourage you to invite a friend or a family member to join in our worship service as, and uh, Week midweek Bible study because again it's God's word that'll help us to grow in our faith. Amen. Amen. And that's just an update from Pastor Sneed and myself, and we look forward to seeing you again next week. Enjoy your day, enjoy your service. Be blessed. Greetings, Ben Washington, to our online viewers. Welcome to our Unity Service. Uh, first Sunday in the month of May. We appreciate you tuning in to our virtual worship service. At this time, we're going to have a, a scripture by Minister Clint Sutton, followed by a prayer and our praise team. Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Isaiah chapter 40, beginning at verse number 28. Have you not known, have you not heard, the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary? His understanding is unsearchable. His, he gives power to the weak, and to those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Good 
Dear Father God, we come to you this morning as humble as we know how with a heart of thanksgiving and a mind to worship God. We thank you for allowing us to even wake up this morning, Father God, to worship your holy name, Father God. We thank you for being so good, and we thank you that when we look back over our lives and see where you brought us from, God, we are thankful, God. We thank, we thank you because you're bringing us through even this situation, Father God. We ask that you heal those that are sick, Father God. Comfort those that are troubled, Father God. Bless those that are bereaved, Father God. We know that you're God, and beside you there is none other, Father God. Now help us to worship you in the spirit of truth, Father God. Father God, we love you and we honor you, Father God. We ask that you touch those that are lying in their beds, Father God, that can't get up to even watch, Father God. We ask that you bless those that are still going to work, Father God. We bless those that are still working, Father God, to make sure that we're all safe, Father God. We ask that you shake up our nation, Father God, and let them want to know you, Father God, because now is the time, Father God. The death rate is going up like never before, Father God, but let those that die, die in you, Father God. Father God, you have your way in our lives, in our minds, in our hearts, Father God. We worship you for the things that you've done, Father God. We bless you for the things that you're going to do, Father God. We thank you for the ways that you've made and the doors that you've opened, Father God. And even with the doors that have been closed in our face, God, give us the mind to praise you until the next door is open, God. We thank you for our pastor and first lady, Father God. Bless them as they lead us and guide us in the way that we should go, Father God. We ask that you bless the Moore family, Father God. Give them strength, Father God. We ask that you bless Sister Meadows, God. Give her strength in the name of Jesus. Bless any of our members, Father God, that may be going through some things right now. Comfort, strengthen, and keep them, God. Have your way, Father God, in our worship service, even today, Father God. Even though we're not together, your Holy Spirit connects us, Father God. And we can feel you all through the waves, God. All through social media, we can feel you, God. We ask that you have your way, Father God. And when you're ready for this pandemic to be over, Father God, we know it'll be over, Father God. But prepare us to be patient, Father God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we love you, we honor you, and we praise you. Amen. Amen. Wherever you are, lift your hands and bless the Lord with us. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. And all that is within me. Bless his
Listen. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him. He's crying. Lord, I lift your name on high. Come on, clap your hands. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, let's Lord. Sing, Lord, I 
lift your name, Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praise. Lord, I love to sing your praise. I'm so glad you're in my I'm so glad you came to save us. I'm so glad you came. To one more time, one more time. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praise. Lord, I love to sing your praise. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth. You came from heaven to earth. thank our praise team for leaders for leading us and praise and reminding us it, it is all about Jesus I want to thank all of our members for your faithfulness uh, and giving of your tithes and your offerings thank you for your support for the kingdom work it really is about the kingdom work so if you would join us in a word of prayer wherever you may be uh, if you would just take your tithe, your offering, and uh, in the Old Testament they had what was called a, a wave offering. They would, they would take uh, that which they were about to give to God and they would wave it. And so where you are, if you, uh, you can take your tithe, your offering, your check, uh, and you can wave it now as we prepare to give. Father God, we ask right now that you would bless us as part of our worship of you. Thank you, Father, for the Bible tells us that you are the giver of every good and perfect gift. And so, Lord, we thank you for being a good God.
And we thank you, Father, for providing us what we need. So, Lord, as we wave our offering before you, we pray, Father God, that it will be, it will be done in the right spirit. We pray that it will serve for the ongoing of your kingdom work. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. And all the saints said amen. 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 God bless you and our, and our giving and our tithes. And our, I'm going to ask Minister Collins at my request to just sing one line of my soul is anchored in the Lord. Because it goes with the message today. Amen. the waves and the currents that seem so fierce. But in the word of God, I've got an anchor. Oh, yes, I do. And it keeps me steadfast and unmovable despite the tides. Oh, but if the storms act like they don't want to cease And if the winds keep on blowing in my life My soul has been uh, anchored Amen. We want to thank God for the opportunity to join him on this Unity Sunday and virtual worship. Uh, we pray God's blessing on you in your homes, in the kitchen, living room, out on your porch, wherever you may be. We pray that God's word will uh, be a blessing to your soul. 
I've been in much prayer regarding uh, what it is that um, we're experiencing right now. And I remember as a kid, as I was watching television, during the day sometimes that would be, uh, the program would go off. And that would be a sound that would, would come on and then it, it would say at the conclusion, this was just a test. Uh, if it was a real emergency, and it goes on to give you instructions. Well, I believe that we, what we're going through right now is just a test. Yeah. Not designed to cause us to uh, to panic, but to be alert yeah. in what to do in case of a real emergency. Yeah. Now, I'm not trying to downplay uh, what has happened in the, with the loss of life, with people being hospitalized and sick, and uh, people losing their jobs and people being forced to uh, not be near their loved ones. But I am reminded that in every test, uh, it is designed to help us to be better and not bitter. And I look at some of the parallels that are going on today and wanted to see if there was a scripture that could be used to demonstrate uh, what the early church did when they were facing a test. And so the passage of scripture that was given to me was, is found in Acts chapter 27. So in Acts chapter 27, verse 31, and it reads, Paul said to the centurion and the soldiers, unless these men stay in the ship, you cannot be saved. And then the soldiers cut away the ropes of the skiff and let it fall away. Paul said, unless these men stay in the ship, you cannot be saved. Then the soldiers cut away the rope of the skiff or the lifeboat and let it fall off. And I want to speak this morning on this subject. Don't jump ship. All right. Don't jump ship. That's good. As I was thinking about worst case scenarios of what we are going through as a believer. And because it is only a test. Yeah. I was reflecting on Satan would like nothing more than to call some people who were faithful in their service, faithful in their attendance to uh, when the restrictions of lifted, to find them deciding to no longer uh, be a part of the movement of God. I believe Satan would, would, would really enjoy, would really be excited if those who identify with Christ because of a test would decide that they no longer want to ride on the ship with Jesus. I believe that Satan would be really, really excited if he discovered that a simple test would cause some who were faithful in their living and faithful in their giving to no longer find it necessary or desirable to live for Christ or to give for Christ. Yeah. In other words, that test that they were confronted with caused them to jump 
ship. Well, in the 27th chapter of Acts, Paul finds himself on a ship. The reason why he found himself on this ship was because in the previous chapter, he was defending his faith in Jesus. He found himself before King Agrippa and Festus and he declared to them that Jesus is the Christ. Yes. Because the Jews, uh, uh, the, uh, the Jewish leaders had rejected Christ and because Paul was preaching the good news of Jesus and his resurrection, they were wanting Paul to be put to death. And so they brought charges against Paul and Paul had to defend himself and he Paul went all the way back to the days of Moses and the prophets and told them that Jesus had been prophesied that he was to come and that Jesus is the promised Messiah. And so as they brought all these charges to Paul and, 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 and as they were desirous that Paul be put to death, Paul said, I make my appeal to Caesar. Yeah. And because Paul had stood up for Jesus and because he was a Roman citizen and because he exercised his citizenship right, yeah. Paul found himself being sent on a ship to Rome. If you read the 27th uh, chapter, beginning with verse 1, it says, And when
then it was decided that he should sail to Italy. All I'm trying to tell you is this, is that Paul, number one, had a destination. Yes. His destination was to get to Rome because Rome was the most powerful empire in the world. Yeah. His destination was to make his appeal to Caesar because Caesar was the most powerful man in the world. But how many of you know that behind the destination there was someone who was trying to uh, move destination with destiny? Yeah. And it was, it was the Lord's desire. That Paul go to the most powerful empire in the most powerful uh, city to speak to the most powerful men and to appeal not only to Caesar but to the entire world that Jesus is the Christ. Yeah. And how many of you know that sometime when you are headed to a, a destination that there can be dangers in the journey? Yeah. So we find that uh, in Verse number two, it says, so Paul entered a ship and the ship was put to sea. Mm -hmm. Is there anybody in here, in here who embarked upon this year, 2020, expecting smooth sailing? Mm -hmm. we, were headed to, we were headed through January and February and all of a sudden, yeah. we found ourselves in a storm. So Paul found himself on a ship that was put to sea. Yeah. And then verse 9 and verse 10 tells us that when time had been spent, that the sailing was now dangerous. Yeah. I mean, no, you can you can go on a journey and it looks sunny in the beginning. Mm -hmm. But all of a sudden you find yourselves in turbulent waters. Yeah. So Paul was on this ship and, and he was uh, headed to Rome and, and, uh, and the ship was, was there to make sure that Paul got to his destination. But in the midst of uh, the sailing, the waters got dangerous. And it was suggested that they were now sailing in the most dangerous time to be on the waters because the fast had now passed or the day of atonement. So it was late in the season. Mm -hmm. And Paul, Paul said to, to those who, who were uh, guiding the ship, the centurion and the, the owners and the captain. Here's what Paul said. Paul said, men, I perceive that this voyage will end in disaster. Yeah. And there will be much loss, not just of cargo, but of ship. And Paul said, not just of cargo and ship, Paul said, also of life. And what Paul said, I don't think we ought to travel uh, during this storm. I don't think we're going to travel the waters because the waters are not safe at this time of year. And so Paul advised those who were in charge, don't, don't, don't go any further. Yeah. But the Bible tells us that the centurion and the captain and the, and the soldiers who were on the ship did not want to spend the winter in the place where they were located. Yes. And they figured uh, if we just go a little bit further, if we have to stop for the winter, we ought to be able to stop somewhere better than where we are right now. Isn't it just like us? That because of some inconvenience and because of some uh, 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 rough waters, we decide that that we don't want to stay where we are. We, we, we want to go down a little bit further. Yeah. I find myself seeing a whole lot of similarities between what went on back then and what is going on right now. Yeah. 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 I believe that there are people who are putting money ahead of life. They're valuing money more than life. Yeah. And so they're saying, Let's just sail a little bit further. Let's don't stay where we are. Let's don't, let's don't shut down right now. Let's go a little bit further. 
And so Paul said to them, I don't think you ought to go. In verse 11, in that same chapter, Paul, uh, these words are recorded. Nevertheless, in other words, in spite of the advice that Paul had given them, nevertheless, the Bible says they were more persuaded by the captain and by the owner of the ship than the things that were spoken of by Paul. Isn't it like us? That even though we get sound advice of what we ought to do, because the majority is saying we ought to do something else, they were persuaded not to listen to sound advice. Can I suggest this, church? Regardless of what's going on right now, I believe the answer for what you ought to do and, and when you ought to do it is found in the Word of God. Yeah. But you know how we are. Even though we might get sound advice sometimes because we want to do what we want to do. Because we're all grown. Because we're now our own person. Because we have our own priorities and because we have our own agenda. We'll do what we find convenient even though what might not be best. So here they are. They have decided to leave the safe harbor. The Bible says it was called the fair haven. They decided to leave the fair haven and travel because it was the will of the majority of people to keep traveling. I don't know about you, but I, I can recall when I was, uh, uh, when I was in college and, and, and uh, I had been away, I had been a, I had been married for a year. My wife had graduated earlier than I had graduated. And, 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 and she was already in San Antonio and I was in El Paso. And I was just trying to, trying to graduate for the summer. And so within a short period of time, I had to uh, uh, study for my tests. I had to sell my furniture. I had to check out of the, I, I had to check out of the, the apartment that I was in. I was so excited. Uh, 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 and I was missing my wife, I decided even though I had not had sleep in the last two days, I decided because I was anxious to get to San Antonio to see my wife, I was going to leave no matter what. So at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, as I was driving down Interstate 10, I was tired, but I, but I, uh, I went against the sound advice of getting good sleep and rest. I decided to leave. Yeah. And within 30 minutes of, uh, of leaving uh, the college that I had been there for four years, Within 30 minutes, I was driving down Interstate 10 and I had fallen asleep in the middle of the day in the car. Yeah. And unbeknownst to me, with my eyes closed, uh, the car was headed into, veering into oncoming traffic on the other side of the highway. Yeah. But all of a sudden, by the grace of God, uh, uh, God woke me up. Right. My wife could have been a widow before the first year of our anniversary. So you know what I decided to do after that experience? I decided to pull over and take a nap. Sometimes it's just good to stay where you are as opposed to trying to move somewhere else because you want to get there in a hurry. So may I tell you what also happened if you read this text? So not only did they have a destination, not only did they have a danger, but they also had a detour. In other words, because they found themselves in a storm that was more hazardous than what they had anticipated. They found themselves having to take a detour. And in taking that detour, uh, uh, not realizing that they should not have left the port. Yeah. 
Yeah. They started to throw some stuff overboard in order to lighten the load. And can I tell you right now, there are some people who, as I speak right now, they are, they are in the process of throwing some stuff overboard in order just to survive. Yeah, yeah. There are some people who, 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 are, who, who have decided that, that they can throw away the word of God because they don't need that right now. Really? There are some people who decide to throw away prayer because that's not helping them right now. They're trying to lighten the load and they're getting rid of stuff in order to, quote, survive. Yeah. And there are some, can I just tell you? It's just a test. Mm -hmm. yeah. I believe. I believe. I believe that we're being tested. The uh, whether or not to stay faithful to the Word of God. Whether we ought to stay faithful in our prayer life. Yeah. 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 Don't y'all remember when when Jesus on on the on the night in which he was betrayed uh, went off to pray. He took three disciples with him. Yeah. And he went and prayed for an hour. And when he came back, they were asleep. And Jesus said these words, couldn't you just stay awake just for an hour? Yeah, I'm all In other words, what we're going through right now isn't a whole day. It is not as long as you might think it is. Yeah. And I believe the Lord is saying, couldn't, couldn't you just stay faithful? For just an hour. Yeah. Could you just stay on course for an hour? Why? Why are you having to give up that which is most valuable to you? Yeah. So can I tell you what happened as they started to discard some stuff on the choppy seas of the Mediterranean? The scripture tells us that for 14 days. They saw no light. They saw no stars. They saw, they saw no moon for, for 14 days. It was a dark time for them. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine uh, uh, having left port because you didn't want to stay where you were? And so now you find yourself in choppy waters and you've gotten rid of what you thought you needed to get rid of in order to survive and now you can't see the light. Mm. Can I suggest that the true light uh, that the believers need to have is Jesus? Yeah. For he is the light of the world. So they found themselves, Brother Collins, with no light. But then they also found themselves without no relief. Can you imagine? 14 days, two weeks, not having any, uh, uh, any light source. Right. And now they find that things are not getting any better. So they had no relief. And then on top of that, the scripture says that they had given all, they had given up all hope that they would survive. Mm -hmm. There were 276 souls on board. And because the storm was getting worse and worse, they had said, they had decided that they had made a bad choice and they would not survive. And there are some people right now who are saying, uh, I don't think I'm going to survive this coronavirus. I don't think the church is going to survive this storm. I don't think we're going to make it through, even though it's only a test. And so they had given up all hope that they would even get to their destination, which was Rome. But in the midst of, uh, of traveling, in the midst of danger, in the midst of despair, Paul stood up and Paul said, I have a demand. Here's what Paul said. Paul said, now, 
You should have listened to me when I advise you not to leave Crete. You ever had somebody uh, uh, say to you after you made a bad choice, uh, uh, you should have listened to me? You ever had somebody remind you that, 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 that you wouldn't be stuck where you are if you had just done what they had told you? Yeah. Yeah. So Paul said to them, if you had just listened, if you had just listened, if you had just listened, we wouldn't be where we are. Now, I don't know about you, but that would, I don't need to hear what Paul just said. I don't need to be reminded that I had just made a bad choice. I don't need to be reminded that for 14 days I've seen no light. So Paul said, if you had listened, but Paul didn't just give, uh, uh, give them a reminder of what should have been. Paul also gave them a demand. Here's what Paul said. You've gone 14 days without eating and you need to eat some food. And I have some good news for you because God spoke to me through an angel last night and, and the angel told me that we're going to get to where we need to go. But in order to get to where we need to go, you're going to need to eat. And Paul said to them, now, now the, the ship that you're sailing on, it's not going to survive the trip, but you'll survive. He said, but in order to survive, you got to eat. Can I suggest this to Ben Washington and to everyone who's listening? You need to eat. You need to eat the word of God because it is food for your soul. You've gone a while without eating because you've been panicking about the the storm that you're in. But can I suggest that even in the midst of the storm, you ought to find some time to eat. Whether you're eating in the morning, whether you're eating at noonday, whether you're eating in the evening, you need to eat. So Paul said, you won't survive this journey unless you eat. So guess what they did? They found encouragement in what Paul told them. Paul said, you're going to survive, but you got to eat. Can I say this, Ben Washington? This is just a test. We'll get through this, but you're going to have to eat. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to have to eat. You're going to have to eat the word of God because the, the scripture said, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet as well as a light unto my pathway. Uh, the psalmist said, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. The, the apostle Peter said, Desire the sincere milk of the word whereby ye may grow. Yeah. Can I suggest? You won't get through this, any storm in life unless you eat the word of God. Yeah. Can I say it again? You won't get through any storm of life unless you eat the word of God. So they ate. How many of you know it's good to eat? Yeah. It's good to eat. Now they had been 14 days without eating. And I asked myself this week, I said, what if some of the saints don't survive the storm? What if some of the saints don't survive and they decide to throw away the thing that is most important to their soul? What if? Because they've gone so long without being uh, around other believers that it's going to cause them to shriek. And I remember reading somewhere that says it takes 21 days to form a habit. In other words, 
You can, you can go so long without having done certain things that, that the thing that you have been formally doing, you have now formed a new habit. How, how so, Sneed? I have discovered because the donut shops were closed yeah. <laughs> that I can actually go without eating a donut. Y'all yeah. didn't hear me. <laughs> In other words, I have formed a new habit. Yeah. In other words, I've decided I can live without the donuts. Why? Because I have formed a habit of not eating the donuts. I knew it wasn't good for me, but I had the habit. But how many of you know that some of us have learned that there are certain things that we were doing that we don't really have to do. In other words, we have decided because of circumstances we can live without it. Am I right? There are some people in the room, you have decided that you can live without certain things because you've been forced to make that choice. Well, what else happened? In our verse, in our text, as they were journeying on, Paul said they were going to make the trip, but they were going to survive it, but they, but it, but they were going to be shipwrecked. Now, Paul can, Paul can actually speak about shipwrecks. How can he speak about shipwrecks? Because he tells us in the book of Corinthians that three times he had been shipwrecked for his faith. Three times he had been shipwrecked. He talked about the fact that he had been whipped. He had been stoned. He had been left for dead. In other words, Paul said, I know how to suffer persecution. Yeah. But he said, all of that, I've learned that, that, that all things work together for good to them who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. So here we are now in verse 32. And Paul says to them, Paul said, unless they stay with the ship, they will not live. So our subject was stay with the ship. Yeah. Don't jump ship. Can I tell you about some ships that you and I should not depart from? One of the ships that we should not depart from is relationships. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Why is that so? Because God told Adam in, 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 in Genesis, it is not good for, for him to be alone. How many know that we all need relationships? Yeah. So that's a ship you should not jump. In other words, you need to surround yourself with people who love the Lord like you love the Lord. And you need to, you need to be able to relate to them. You need to encourage them. They need to encourage you. And if you can't get a hold of them, encourage yourself. Yeah. Amen. So you need to have, you need to stay on the relationship. Can I tell you that's another ship you should not jump? You should not jump. You should not jump. Jump. The discipleship. Yeah. Because every believer needs to be disciple. Yeah. In other words, you are a follower of Jesus. And, and how can you be disciple unless you're disciplined? Yeah. Mm. And could it be that God is trying to put some things in order? To teach us some discipline in order for us to be better than we are? I don't know about you, but, but, but to me, a uh, uh, relationship is one ship I ought to stay on. Discipleship is one ship I ought to stay on. But there's another ship. Yeah. And I believe this is the ship that I'm missing the most. Yeah. You ought to stay on the ship called fellowship. Yeah. 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 I don't know about you, but I miss Brother Johnson saying what he says is, uh, every Sunday morning. Yeah. I, I miss Brother Curry 
the, uh, the number one cowboy fan sitting where he is. Yeah. I, I'm missing the fellowship. And even when this thing is over, I can't wait to get back in the presence of the saints who love the Lord because I've discovered fellowship is very, very important to my soul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're right. Isn't it true? That some things we don't value as much until it's taken away from us. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a, there's a relationship you ought to stay on board. There's a discipleship you ought to stay on board. There's fellowship you ought to stay on board. But there's another ship. I would advise your brother Ed to stay on this ship. Yeah. It's called the Lordship. In other words, Jesus is still Lord. Yeah. And even though things might be topsy-turvy today, he's still Lord. Even in the midst of the storm, he's still Lord. Yeah. That's good news. Am I right? Amen. Are you right? So, so when you are when you find yourself in a storm, or you find yourself in a test, you don't have to ask Jesus, Master. Carest thou not that we perish? Can I just tell you, he's never stopped caring. And because he's never stopped caring, and because he's always the same, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, he is still Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's good. He's still Lord. How do I know he's still Lord? In other words, no matter what happens to me, he's still Lord. There was three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They had been told, but there was a new law. And every time they hear the music, they're to bow down and worship the statue. And they told the king, you can, see, you can make whatever law you want to make. We're not going to bow down. Because the God we serve is still God. He told us, you should have no other God before me. That king got threatened. That king said, because you think you're better than me and bigger than me, I'm going to show you who's boss. So he tied their hands. He made the furnace even hotter. And he threw them into the fiery furnace, expecting them to be burned up. Can I tell you something? Not only will Jesus be with you in a storm, he'll be with you in a fire. How do I know he'll be with you in a fire? Because the scripture says, the scripture says, the scripture says, didn't I throw three in? So listen, listen, listen. There was three that were thrown into the fiery furnace. Yeah. And the king, the king knew some math. So he counted. He counted one Mississippi. Yeah. He counted two Mississippi. He counted three Mississippi. And lo and behold, he even counted four Mississippi. And he said, this, didn't I throw three in? Yeah. And I see a fourth one. And the fourth one looks like the son of man. All I'm trying to tell you is the God who will keep you in a storm will keep you in a fire. Hallelujah. So here's what happened. All I'm trying to tell you is stay on the ship called relationship. Stay on the ship called discipleship. Stay on the, stay on the ship called fellowship. And stay on the ship called lordship. But there's another ship, Brother Derek, that you ought to stay on this ship. Can I tell you what ship this is? It's called the ship of worship. You ought to stay on worship. Why is that? Because he is worthy to be worshipped. He is worthy of praise. No matter what you're going through, you ought to be able to worship him. And if you cannot worship him the way you ought to worship, you ought to give him a yet praise. You ought to worship him in spite of. You ought to worship him because of. No matter what's going on in your life, don't jump the ship called worship. Yeah. Every day is a day you ought to praise the Lord. Yeah. So here's what happened. They were ready to jump ship. 
but they were also ready, uh, they were ready to not only jump ship, they, were, they lowered the lifeboat. And, 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 and when Paul made that famous statement, unless they stay on board, they'll all die. Yeah. The centurion, because he didn't listen to Paul the first time, he said, I'm listening to Paul this time. Yeah. They cut the lifeboat that they were going to escape to, they cut off the lifeboat. So now all they have is the ship that they're on. And then, then the centurion said, those of you that can swim, go on and swim to the shore. They saw some land. If you can swim, swim to the shore. But I mean, you know, with 276 people on board, there had to be some Negroes on board. And some of them, some of them didn't take swimming lessons. Right. And so they could not swim. So listen to this. Listen, here's what I discovered. The thing that they were trying to escape from was the very thing that saved their life. In other words, they were ready to jump the ship. But when the ship began to fall apart, they held on to, yeah. they held on to the ship. Yeah. And it was the ship yeah. that allowed them to get safely to the shore. Yeah. All I'm trying to tell you is don't jump ship. Yeah. <laughs> because if you jump ship, the very thing that can save your life is the very thing you abandon. But because they decided to stay on board, when the ship began to fall apart, they held on to it closely. And that, and that piece that they held on closely was able to help them float safely to the shore. All I'm trying to tell you is don't jump ship. No, no, no. no. If you can serve the Lord in the good times, you ought to be able to serve him in the tough times. If you can serve God when it's sunny, you ought to be able to serve him when it's cloudy. If you can serve God when you got a lot on your kitchen, you ought to be able to serve him when you don't have much in the refrigerator. You, if you can serve him when you got a whole bunch of money in the bank, you ought to be able to serve him when you don't have any money in the bank. Why? Because he's still the same God. Don't, can I, can I suggest to you, Squeeze a little bit harder. Yeah. Can I suggest this to you? Come a little bit closer. Yeah. May I suggest this to you? Listen a little more carefully. Can I suggest this to you? This is only a test. It's only a test. And when things are over, and we get back to whatever we call normal. Yeah. Will we still find you faithfully on board? Will you still be with relationships? Will you still be with the discipleship? Will you still be with the fellowship? Will you still be with the lordship? Will you, feel, will you still be with the worship? Or will you decide that you can make it on your own? I don't know about you, but I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. Well, here's what happened. Why was it necessary for Paul to get the wrong? Why was it necessary for Paul to get to the most powerful city to appeal to the most powerful person in the world? It was because the Lord had it planned for him to be there. And do you know what Paul did while he was waiting his appeal? He wrote what's called the prison epistles. He wrote the book of Philippians. He penned a letter to the church at Colossians. He penned a letter to the church at Ephesus. In other words, 
Paul, when he found himself locked up, he was still doing God's bid. He was still doing God's work. Can I suggest this to you? That while you find yourself locked up, where you can't move where you want to move, do what you want to do, find yourself doing something good for somebody other than yourself. Yeah, my God. Paul learned that whatever state he's in, to be content. Yeah. He learned what you and I need to learn, that this too will pass. Yeah. One guy said it this way, only what you do for Christ will last. And that's why, that's why what Paul did for Christ, as he was writing, thinking about others, that's why it's still alive today. Even though Paul has gone on the glory, what he did while he was locked up is still blessing somebody. So I'm asking you, will you be a blessing to somebody other than yourself? When all this is over, will you be better or will you be bitter? When all this is said and done, will you be closer to the Lord or barely where you can see him? I don't know about you, but I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. I just decided to follow him. You, where you are, right where you are. If you don't know Jesus Christ in the pardon of your sins, can I tell you something? He still saves. He saves from the uttermost to the guttermost. He still saves. He can save you at the White House. He can save you at the State House. And he can save you at your house because he still saves. How do I know he saves? Because even a thief knew a good deal when he heard one. Even a thief in the last second of his life knew a good deal. And that's why he said, Lord, when you enter into your kingdom, remember me. I used to watch this game show called Deal or No Deal. I used to love that game show because there were some people who passed up a good deal. (laughs) Can I suggest to you, don't pass up Jesus. Don't pass him up. Because if you pass him up, you won't make it. Right where you are. Don't get in the habit. Don't get in the habit when this is over. Don't get in the habit of getting up at 10:30, 11 o'clock, like some of us do now. Don't get in the habit and say, "Well, I think I just have church at home." I don't know about you. I miss the fellowship. I know I can worship God at home by myself, but isn't there something to be said about corporate worship? Isn't there something to be said about fellowship and discipleship? Isn't there something to be said about being on the same boat with your brothers and sisters, making it safely? to your destination. One of these days, we will have to get off the ship. One of these days, we're gonna get off that ship. You know what ship that is? It's called the ship of Zion. One of these days, we're gonna cross over the river to the other side, but It's all right to cross over the river to the other side if you got somebody on the other side waiting to say, come on home. (laughs) 
right where you are. Let's pray right now. Father God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus for every saint, every child of God. My prayer, Father God, is that they don't jump ship. They don't give up. They don't quit. Because, Lord, this is only, only a test. If this had been a real emergency, you would have come. But, Lord, it's just a test. So, Father God, help us to pass this test as we travel along this way. If there's somebody here, Father, who don't know Christ, I pray right now that they will take all their sins and ask Jesus to forgive them. And he'll forgive them and he'll wash them clean and make them whiter than snow. I've decided to follow Jesus. There's no turning back. I've come too far to turn around. I've decided I'm going to wait till my change comes. So Lord, bless us now. Help us to never give up. Help us to never quit. Help us to eat your word so we can grow stronger for the journey that's ahead. All for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, if you have the if you've made a decision for Christ to accept him, or you decide to be a part of this fellowship, will you call our church on 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 Monday and tell them that you have decided to be a part of the Ben Washington Baptist Church. And, and if you've never been baptized, we'll baptize you. Because the scripture says, he that believe it and is baptized shall be saved. So I want to thank you for tuning in. I pray that this week you'll stay on board. Amen. Now will you repeat after me? Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before your throne. To the only wise God be power, glory, and majesty forever. Amen. 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 God bless you until we meet again. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you for listening to the Ben Washington Baptist Church online Sunday service. We pray that you have been blessed.